If you or a loved one have been a victim of domestic violence, help is available. Speak with someone today. You can contact the National Domestic Violence Hotline 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Available in English, Spanish, and over 200 languages through Interpretation Service. You can dial them at 1-800-799-7233. Again, that's 1-800-799-7233. Or text BEGIN, that's B-E-G-I-N, to 88788. WWE Universe, the d Podcast is now a brand affiliate of WWE Shop with Fanatics. Get all of your latest merchandise from your favorite WWE superstars and wear them proud. So if it's CM Punk, the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes, L.A. Knight, the Tribal Chief Roman Reigns, or legends like The Rock, Stone Cold Steve Austin, and Bret the Hitman Hard. Again, you can get all of your favorite merchandise over at wrestling.thedlupodcast.com. Again, that's wrestling.thedlupodcast.com to get all of your favorite merchandise at WWE Shop with Fanatics. This podcast is a Believe Network and Luciete production. Welcome to another edition of the d Lou Podcast, brought to you by Believe Network. I'm your host, Darren T. Lewis, and I want to wish all of you, of course, across the United States, a happy Independence Day, 4th of July, and I hope it's, you know, well spent with your loved ones, you know, cooking out and all that good stuff. So, yours truly uh, probably will be doing some work, you know, on this 4th of July holiday. I got some things cooking up, as they, as they like to say, so stay tuned for that. But before I get into, you know, this week's episode, because, you know, we have to talk about this weekend's uh, Money in the Bank, um, PLE, pay-per-view, whatever you want to call it, emanating from um, the Scotiabank Center in Toronto, Canada, you know, yours truly is in the running for America's next top hit maker. That's right. I got selected. Um, I don't know how. I'm so grateful that I did. But here's the, here's the short of it. Basically, you know, there's a link in my bio. And there's a link in the description as well, as well as the link in my bio on all of my social media. If you click just once a day and the first round of um, of this ends on July 11th, because what happens if I win this thing, I get an opportunity to be featured in Rolling Stone magazine. I win some cash and I also get to perform at Rolling Stones SXSW music showcase event in Austin, Texas. A wonderful opportunity for me on the music side of things, you know, to explore, you know, all that I'm doing. So if you can, can just go to all of my social media, you know, or if you go to the, the description in this episode where you can click the link and you can just vote once a day. It's free to do, free of charge, nothing to um, nothing more, nothing less. So here's the hoping that um, I'm an America's next top hit maker. But last week. You know, last Friday, as a matter of fact, I took my stepdaughter to see a WWE SmackDown at Madison Square Garden. Now, for all intents and purposes, my stepdaughter has never been to a WWE live event. And this is actually her birthday gift that I got her back in April. So the minute that she was aware, she was made aware that she got the ticket. So she was beyond floored. So it was just me and her hanging out. And, you know, she got to see pro wrestling at Madison Square Garden. I wanted I wanted her first live event to be special and to be big. And I got some cool stepdad points for it. So it was an awesome time. But man, let me tell you, that ending to SmackDown has been buzzing all over social media. I believe it's gotten over 60 million views of, you know, the new bloodline. You know, that's including um, the latest edition, um, Jacob Fatu, absolutely destroying Paul Heyman because he did not. And I repeat, did not acknowledge Solo Sokoa as his tribal chief. So this is going to be some very interesting storytelling for the months ahead. Cause I tell you right now, when Roman, not if when Roman Reigns returns, that is going to be extremely, extremely epic. And I can't wait to see what happens from here. But I want to talk about, you know, the and break down, you know, this entire card. 
for Money in the Bank. You know, again, five matches on a PLE again. And it's like, I'm assuming this is going to be the precedent going forward, you know, of, you know, these these premium live events where I guess you want to make it feel special by not overexposing the talent. And obviously for the classic four, you know, your Royal Rumbles, well, I can't really count that because of course you got the two Rumble matches, but meaning like WrestleMania, SummerSlam and Survivor Series, that's going to be more of your, you know, ever you're going to see a lot of people. So I think less is more as now that I'm starting to see the trend now. But again, this is the the fourth PLE outside of the United States. So like I said, they are putting world in world wrestling entertainment as more than ever before. But I'm going to go over each match and just give you my opinion, give you what can happen, you know, after the fact. And just the prediction of who's going to be who's going to win these matches. Um, the I mean, again, I don't know if this is going to be in um, in order in match order, but I'm just going off of what I see here. You know, for the men's Money in the Bank ladder match, you know, you have main event Jay Uso versus Carmelo Hayes versus Andrade versus Chad Gable versus L. A. Knight and the uh, the player hater of the year Drew McIntyre, um, I gotta tell you, you know, I like this this um these guys in there because to me it's it, people. I mean, granted, Drew's a made guy already in, in in essence. You know, Drew's a made guy. He's a former world champion, multi time. Um, Jay Uso's a made guy, but he hasn't had singles gold. So I think something like this can benefit him. Carmelo Hayes is on the come up. You know, Andrade's on his second run. You know, Chad Gable's on this this new heel run, which I really love. And of course, you got LA Knight, who is, you know, he's on the cusp of being, you know, a main top guy. But I think a match like this can definitely um highlight him. But to me, here's my prediction. People I saw somebody um on Twitter slash X on Monday talking about, you know, whether or not Drew, if CM Punk is going to cost Drew McIntyre the match, the qualifying match, you know, this past uh, Monday. And I'm just like, nah, Punk will let him live, then cost him at Money in the Bank. So I think somehow, some way, Punk is going to cross the border. He's going to cross that Canadian border. And knowing at, at Canadian Customs, they're probably going to, they're not going to even check Punk for any uh, passport. They're just going to let Punk in because they already know what he's going to do. Just when Drew McIntyre's climbing that ladder rung by rung by rung by rung. No music. You don't need no music. CM Punk is just going to meet him at the top of the ladder and just clobber the hell out of him and cost him the Money in the Bank ladder match. That's right. CM Punk is going to cost Drew McIntyre the Money in the Bank ladder match. And who's going to win? Main event, Jay Uso is my opinion. Who's going to win it? Right now, Jay is like I said. <clears throat> if you look at, you know, I was at Smack when I was just me and um, my stepdaughter at SmackDown, and Jay had the dark match after the camera stopped rolling. Let me tell you, that crowd was up for Jay Uso. It's not even a matter of uh, is he? No, he is. He is. He's he's on the cusp of being a super super top guy. And a man, not the coin of the the the, um, the moniker main event, but he he will be a main eventer, I think. And him cashing in money in the bank, and we'll talk about the the the, the other stuff later on on who he'll cash on, who he'll cash in on. But your winner of the men's money in the bank ladder match will be main event Jey Uso. Next, we have the women's money in the bank. Uh, ladder match for the match contract. Obviously, we have uh, EO Sky, who won it last year. You have Chelsea Green, Lyra Valkyria, Tiff Tiffany Stratton, Naomi, and Zoe Stark. Now, again, I love the fact that these are now. Grant again, Naomi's a former women's champion. EO Sky is a former women's champion and Money in the Bank winner. And the other four are. Mid, uh, on the mid card, but they're on they're on the come up, and I like it. I like the fact that these are new women that are that are being featured now. You don't have to have Bianca in there. She's 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 Teflon. She's 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 made. You don't need her in there, and you actually don't even need Jay Cargill in there because even though Jade is still new, Jade don't need a match like this. 
she needs to be kept as far away from this type of match as possible because you want to you want to make her special for what I think is going to happen eventually down the road. You want to leave her out of this match just for this time, maybe somewhere down the road. But I think as they're introducing Jade, she doesn't need a match like this right now. I believe the winner of the women's Money in the Bank ladder match. Feel the glow, baby. It's time. And it's going to be Naomi. And I believe this is going to lead to her potential heel run. Again, this is just opinion. I don't have any uh, secondhand or thirdhand knowledge of anyone that works at WWE. I don't. But this is just an opinion. I think Naomi as a heel has mileage. And I think her cashing in on Bailey can 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 do numbers, I think. And they can have, you know, a damn good feud in my opinion. So Naomi, winner of the Money in the Bank ladder match, and maybe she can cash in on Bailey, maybe at SummerSlam. We'll see. Up next we have Damian Priest uh, defending the World's Heavyweight Championship in a last chance match against Seth freaking Rollins and again if Priest wins Rollins will never challenge for the title as long as Priest is champion but if Seth Rollins wins Damian Priest must This episode of the Delu podcast Day. is brought to you by Goalie Nutrition. As someone who's used Goalie for quite some time, I can tell you that they're not only very good, but they're very beneficial. My favorite are the Super Green Gummies. The Super Green Gummies are uniquely crafted with a spectrum of essential nutrients such as vitamins A, B12, folic acid, and theamine. It supports a healthy liver function, healthy nervous and immune system, digestive health, a boost to your metabolism, and overall health and well-being. There are no artificial sweeteners, flavors, or colors from artificial sources. They're vegan-friendly, gluten-free, and gelatin-free. All loyal listeners of the d podcast get a special 10% discount at checkout. Go to Goalie.com, use promo code D-L-E-W. That's Goalie. Dot com use promo code D L E W. There's a lot of stipulations in this match, huh? A lot of uh you know detours or trajectories in regards to where these things can go if either guy wins, right? You know, if Damian Priest, you know, wins the match, you know, I'm hoping maybe Seth Rollins can hope and pray that Seth loses the title the next week so he can be in title contention again. Or, you know, of course, you know, Damian Priest, you know, winning and he can definitely stay in the judgment day. You know what I mean? So I see this playing out this way. Because you have Gunther, you know, waiting at SummerSlam, being that he did win the King of the Ring. I believe, I truly believe that is going to be Seth Rollins that's going to win the World's Heavyweight Championship. And face Gunther at SummerSlam. Damian Priest is going to be without the Judgment Day. Which I think is going to lead to his babyface run. Because as you can clearly see the writings on the wall. Liv Morgan is kind of sliding her way into the Judgment Day. And I think Liv is going to cost Damian Priest the match. Or something's going to happen where Liv is at, goes to the ringside. And Dom or whoever from Judgment Day is trying to you know prevent her. You know, tell her to go in the back. And then I think inadvertently Damian Priest may get knocked out or something like that and ultimately cost him the match and again you know Seth Rollins will be the world's the world's heavyweight champion and I believe that that's when maybe they kick out the, the the ultimate kick out happens on money in the bank where they actually could beat the crap out of Damian Priest or maybe it can happen on Monday again I don't know but all indications leading to the fact that a mommy's coming back Rhea Ripley's coming back, which means it's trouble for Liv Morgan. <laughs> it's trouble. And maybe I believe the new Judgment Day can be without Rhea and without Damien and maybe Liv Morgan being, I guess, the leader of Judgment Day. We'll see. We'll see what happens. But it's a lot of a lot of things that can can go down, you know, on this um this PLE. And I'm really looking forward to seeing how everything plays out. Next we have the um the match for the uh, the Intercontinental Championship, um, Sami Zayn, who has been on this incredible run so far since WrestleMania, you know, defending against Braun Breaker. Let me explain something to y'all. For the you know, I've been watching wrestling over forty years, and I remember you know Braun's dad Rick and Braun's uncle Scott, better known as the Steiner Brothers, 
how just intense they were in the ring, their 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 badassery, as we like to say, you know, in there, they were tough, they were rough in there, but they were so good at what they did as a tag team. Then of course, Scott Steiner, um, you know, his later his later on heel run at the NWO was Big Papa Pump. You know, I enjoyed his work. It's like Braun Breaker has his dad's look, but has his uncle's intensity. And that's not that's not a bad thing. You know what I mean? That's not a bad thing at all. And I think, you know, Braun, he, Braun Breaker has it. He has the athleticism. He has the aggression. He looks like a professional wrestler. He really does. And although... It seems as if that, you know, and I love how Sami Zayn is always working from underneath, even though he is, you know, the champion. Everyone's thinking, oh, Sami's going to lose. Sami's going to lose. And he's he's the he's the true underdog. He is a true underdog. So I still feel that Sami's going to walk, walk walk out as the Intercontinental Champion still. I don't think it's I, I think it might be a little too early to put the belt on Braun Breaker. I guess we can wait another month. We'll see. But. I truly believe that Sammy's going to retain, you know, the championship and I, you know, it's going to be a one hell of a match and it, there's not there's never ever been a bad match with Sammy Zayn. Let's call it for what it is. And um and kudos to Sammy Zayn by the way. He was going to be doing a stand-up comedy bit in Toronto this weekend. Now, if you've been paying attention to his Twitter, a certain someone that he faced at WrestleMania 2 years ago might be making an appearance. So, I hope this. I hope that can be seen somewhere online or something like that because I would love to hear Sammy's uh, stand up. And of course, the main event, which I did predict this match is going to happen. By the way, six man tag team match and baby, we got the Bloodline, which consists of any three. <laughs> they didn't say which ones. Of course, there's Solo Sokoa, Tama Tonga, Tonga Loa, and Jacob Fatu. Any three of them versus. Kevin Owens, Randy Orton, and the undisputed WWE champion, the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes. Now, this match is going to be chaotic. This match is going to be an, it's going to be a dogfight. They're going to be fighting probably all over the arena. Heck, if they want to, they could fight out on Front Street if they want to in Toronto. Front Street, Yonge Street. Dundas Square, whatever. Heck, I wish they put a ring in Dundas Square in Toronto. For those that have been to Toronto, you guys know what I'm talking about. But I actually see the bloodline winning this match because it serves no purpose for Cody, Randy, and Kevin to win the match. Especially for what I predicted a couple of weeks ago on this show, I believe, where I did say that somehow, some way, inadvertently, Cody's going to hit Randy. Randy's gonna get Randy's gonna get pinned, and that's when you start seeing now stirring the pot for SummerSlam for Cody to defend the championship against Randy Orton. Now I don't know if you guys saw it at Clash of the Castle when Orton and KO made the save for Cody when he got attacked by the Bloodline. How when he was holding up Cody, he was taking a peek at the WWE Championship belt. And when Cody was cutting a promo last Friday on SmackDown, he was talking about how he was looking forward to having somebody challenging for the WWE Championship. And Randy Orton turned around and said, whoa, wait, wait a minute. So you, they're, they're, they're planting seeds right now. They're planting seeds. So, I again, I truly believe that the bloodline will walk out victorious. And maybe, just maybe, we might see an appearance from one tribal chief Roman Reigns, I think that might be the time for him to show up at the end of the show. If they and I believe this is going to be the main event, I can't see why not. I think Roman makes his return at Money in the Bank to confront, to confront this 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 version of the Bloodline, and we'll see what happens. Oh, and by the way, huge kudos! I gotta I gotta say this now. I'm speaking of last week's uh, SmackDown, um, for those that know or don't know, you know, in the wrestling industry, you know, when you're on the independent circuit. You know, there are times where, you know, opportunities come and you could be an extra, you know, on, you know, on Raw or SmackDown or even a PLE. And for those that are they play cops or security guards, whatever the case may be, those are 10 times out of 10. Some guys that are working already on the independent circuit and it's an opportunity for them to be seen on camera. 
Huge kudos to my boy, David Goldie from the Monster Factory, who took, who literally was the recipient of a crossroads by Cody Rose last Friday, and he went viral. People wanted to know who that guy was that took an unbelievable crossroads, and it was David Goldie. So if you guys haven't already, make sure you follow him. You know, it's at the David Goldie on Instagram and Twitter. He is going to be then he's going to be one of the next up and coming superstars. Uh, in addition to many others at the world famous Monster Factory. I mean, there's too many to mention right now. There's, there's so many guys that you're going to be seeing over the next four to five years who's going to be on your TVs. So pay attention to the Monster Factory. Subscribe to the Monster Factory's YouTube channel, the world famous Monster Factory, and you can see the the future of pro wrestling at the world famous monster factory well that like i said that does it for my predictions in regards to money in the bank on what i think is going to happen you know we'll see i'll be keeping count and if i'm dead wrong then you can tweet me <laughs> at the real dt lou on all my social media platforms that's instagram x in every social media known to man with the exception of uh, facebook which is Derek t lewis official page if you haven't already done so, subscribe to the show. It's free to do. There's Apple Podcasts, there's Spotify, iHeartRadio, and even YouTube. So if you can go to my YouTube channel, Derek T. Lewis, you can click subscribe, and you'll be able to get all of my updates for the d Loop Podcast, audio and video, although this week's will not be video, it'll just be audio, but you'll get updates on my music as well as my acting stuff and everything in between. So make sure you subscribe. Speaking of my music, again, stream on my music which for regardless of what it is my old stuff and my new stuff working on some new stuff now so stay tuned for that so i'm gonna get out of here i'm gonna damn cutting it cutting it short today because like i said it is the uh fourth of july um holiday i want you all to enjoy your time with your your families your friends and be safe with fireworks we don't want to have what happened to jason pierre paul former uh new york giant and uh former tampa bay buccaneer um defensive uh, player who uh, unfortunately had his fingers blown off a few years ago playing with fireworks which was like come on man so be safe out there with the with the fireworks firecrackers and just be safe with that stuff and um no matter what it is you do in life never forget to make it count see you next time